Hi everyone, I'm Milene from English Made Easy, bringing you another interesting lesson in English. This is one of my favorite poems, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. I love the element of mystery and all the symbolism he has used in it. So the name of the poem is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Why is it called the road not taken? You will get to that shortly. Here's the first verse of the poem. The poem has four verses or four stanzas and each stanza or verse has five lines. This is the first verse in front of you and it has five lines as you can see. Okay. The rhyme scheme is A, B, A, A, B, which means that the first line rhymes with the third and fourth, while the second line rhymes with the fifth line. If you look in front of you, I will point that out. Wood in the first line rhymes with stood and could in the third and the fourth lines. Both in the second line rhymes with growth, undergrowth, growth in the fifth line or the last line and all other verses follow the same rhyme scheme it's a b a a b with the same lines rhyming the rhythm is different all through the poem this shows us that the poet has let his thoughts flow naturally only the last line has a definite rhythm and rhyme i'll point that out to you when we get there so let's go through the poem starting with the first verse the Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Undergrowth is a dense growth of shrubs and other plants. The poem, like I said earlier, is full of imagery symbolism and metaphor. What do these words mean? Imagery is nothing but a descriptive figurative language, especially in literary work. Symbolism is the use of symbols to represent ideas or qualities. And metaphors are nothing but a figure of speech in which a word or a phrase is applied to something to which it is not really a applicable. So beginning with two roads diverged in a yellow wood. If you look at the literal meaning of it, the poet can see two roads in front of him and they are diverging. They're going in two different directions in a yellow wood, a forest which looks yellow. And why would a forest look yellow? Because it would be autumn. Sorry, I could not travel both. What he means to say is both roads look so beautiful. He wants to travel down both the roads and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Again, just the literal meaning first. So the poet is standing there looking at both roads like a traveler would have done and he is trying hard to decide which road he should choose. And far beyond, he can see that it is bending in the undergrowth and he cannot see beyond a certain point because of the thick growth of shrubs in that area. Now let's go to what this verse actually represents. Yellow wood symbolizes autumn or rather the autumn of life, which refers to advancing age. Two roads symbolizes two choices, two decisions, two choices that the poet had in front of him. The description of the road is a metaphor for the future. Here we have a metaphor. Road splitting into two is an extended metaphor, a more complex one. Two roads symbolizes the two choices, like I said earlier, that the poet has to make. He would have loved to travel down both roads, roads. Both choices seemed wonderful at that time. But unfortunately, he can only choose one. He wished he could have both, but that was impossible. 
he spent a lot of time trying to make his decision because it says here that he looked down one as far as he could. He, he kept looking far, but he couldn't see the end. He couldn't really decide what the future was going to be. He tried his best to look into the future of each choice, but the distant future wasn't clear. It wasn't possible to know what the outcome of his choice would be, but he did spend a lot of time thinking about it. Here's the next verse. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. So taking the literal meaning first, he could see two roads in front of him. Okay, and he had a tough decision to make. He had to decide whether he was going to choose this road or that road, but he chose the other after a lot of thought. He chose the other road as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim. It seemed like a better choice. Because it was grassy and wanted where? Wanted where? No one seemed to have trod in that path that morning. It was still grassy. It was not worn out. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. Both paths, apart from that bit that it was grassy, that one path was grassy, both were approximately the same. He was having a tough time making his decision, but finally he did make a decision. So the first line of this verse, then took the other as just as fair, then took the other is the metaphor for a sudden decision. He has suddenly made his decision. In the first verse, we see that he is pondering over it for a long time. And now he has suddenly made his decision. He wasn't sure about his choice because both choices seemed equally good or bad. However, one choice stood out as a better one because it seemed an unexplored one. He says, wanted where, wanted where, unexplored. But apart from that, both choices were the same. If you look at line three and four, because it was grassy and wanted where, though as for that, the passing there, these are metaphors for a decision less commonly made. Let's go to the next verse. First, the literal meaning and both, both paths that morning, it's morning, equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. No one had walked that way yet. Oh, he sighs, oh, either with joy or with sorrow. I kept the first for another day. Remember in the second verse, we heard that he chose the second path. He made the second choice and he kept the first for another day. He did not think that he would never make the first choice. In fact, he thought he would do that some other time. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. Knowing how way leads on to way. You know, when you start walking, you go on and on and on and coming back becomes really hard. I doubted if I should ever come back. He really doubted if he would come back and take the first path, even though he intended to. So if you look at line one and two, and both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. These are metaphors because it means no, he had no way of telling which choice was better. Both that morning equally lay. There was actually no way of telling which choice was better. And there's a lot of imagery used here as well because he's talking about the leaves that had fallen freshly. Because the leaves had fallen freshly, he couldn't tell which path had been traveled by others the day before. Looking at the third, fourth and fifth line also, there are metaphors for decisions. Oh, I kept the first for another day. This again is a metaphor. He's talking about a decision that he has kept for another day, a choice that he has kept for later. And while both choices seemed equally good or bad at that time, 
when he made his choice, he seems hesitant by saying, oh, and says that though he chose the second option, he decided to explore the first one another time, but wasn't sure if he would ever get a chance to do so, even though he wasn't sure that he would ever get a chance to do that, he, he knows that he should go forward, taking the choice that he has made. Here's the next verse. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Now we don't really know whether the sigh is a happy one or a sad one. You can decipher it any way you want, but I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. He says he knows that when he's made that choice, Ages from then, he might be telling the story with a sigh. Two roads diverged in a wood. There was a time in his life when he had two decisions to make, two equally good or equally bad decisions. And I, I, he's stressing on the word I by using it twice. I, he's talking about himself. I took the one less traveled by. He made the choice that not many people would make. And that has made all the difference. If it was a good choice, that has made all the difference in his life, made him the success that he is right now. If it was a bad choice, that is what has made the difference to his life and made all the unhappiness in his life happen. So his decision made the difference in his life, but we don't know whether it's a good decision or a bad decision. It just depends on how you want to interpret it. Perhaps the poet finds it ironical that no matter what you choose in life, no matter how good you think your choices, you may still have regrets. Or perhaps he wants to demonstrate how he made a very difficult decision in his youth, which people usually wouldn't have made. And that has brought him happiness and success. I really love this poem. Shall I read it to you one more time now without any pausing? The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Thank you. I'll end here and see you soon. Bye.